Thank you for joining me again in Praying the Bible. Thus far, we've looked at some Psalms, and I've argued that the Psalms are the easiest place in Scripture from which to pray Scripture. And that's because the Psalms are the only book of the Bible inspired by God for the very purpose of being reflected to God. But now I think the second best or second easiest place in Scripture from which to pray the Bible are the New Testament letters. And the reason is there's just so much compacted in almost every verse. Almost every verse in the New Testament letters will suggest matter for prayer. So today I am looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. I've chosen 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 because it's not that particularly well known. If I said, hey, let's look at 1 Corinthians 13, well, there's a good chance you know what's there. If I said, let's go to Romans chapter 8, you may be very familiar with Romans chapter 8. But in real life, most of the chapters in the New Testament letters aren't as familiar as those, most likely. So it raises the question, though, if, if the Psalms are the best place in Scripture from which to pray Scripture, what would ever lead a person to want to pray through 1 Thessalonians 2? Most likely, it's where they were doing their daily Bible reading today. They were reading in 1 Thessalonians 2, and they said, you know what, I only have a few minutes here. I, I don't, I don't want to go to anywhere else. I want to stay here. I want to camp out in this passage. This really ministered to me. So I want to go back and pray through what I just read through. If I were to read and then pray through 1 Thessalonians 2 today, it might look something like this. For you yourselves know, brothers, that our coming to you was not in vain. Lord, I am coming today to this meeting, to a group of people, to a situation. I don't want that to be in vain, Lord. I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste their time. I pray it would be a fruitful meeting, and then I would expand upon what the purpose of that meeting is. But perhaps I might add, too, that I would be a faithful witness for Christ in that, in that meeting. Then when nothing else comes to mind, I would go to the next verse. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully treated in Philippi, as you know, well, let's just, let's just stop in mid-sentence right there. What really stands out are the words suffered and been shamefully treated. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're suffering right now, some physical illness, some some. Uh, uh, oppressive uh, influence in your life that's causing you to suffer or you know someone who is or someone is being shamefully treated and you pray about that situation in your life or in their life perhaps uh, some of our persecuted brothers around the world you would want to pray for then when nothing else comes to mind to pray about that you continue we had the boldness in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in the midst of much conflict Oh, God, give me the boldness to speak the gospel to that person down the street, that person at work with whom I'm burdened about their lost condition. Or I pray for those Christians in those persecuted places, those who are suffering, that they would share the gospel with much boldness, despite the opposition of the government or of false religions. And then verse 3, For our appeal does not spring from error or impurity or any attempt to deceive, and so perhaps you pray about error that someone is coming under. Someone in your life you know has fallen under error. There is some false teaching that they're experiencing. Perhaps the idea of impurity there causes you to pray about temptations to impurity in your life or in your children's life or spouses or someone else's. And then the idea of being deceived. And maybe you know someone who's coming under deception and you would pray about that. On and on you would go praying through this passage and it would be unlike any prayer you ever prayed in your life simply because you prayed the Bible. So why don't you try it? Why don't you continue here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 for the next few minutes and give it a try. Pray the Bible.